Hello, I am Bendem and welcome back to Factorio Towns. In the previous episode we named the Blue Science Town Newton and the Blue Science in question is already well underway. We've got all the necessary materials being delivered or made on site um, and we've already got uh, a couple of bits of research done. We've got advanced oil processing and uh, we're now working on military technologies because the brighter threat is growing quite rapidly. But first we are going to deal with uh, the oil situation because um, the supply of batteries has stopped. The reason being that we have run out of... Um, what do you call it? Petroleum gas. I always forget the names of the different oil fractions, but yes, we've run out of petroleum gas because the supplies of um, heavy and light oil have completely built up. But now that we have advanced oil processing, we can uh, add in some cracking plants and we can change the uh, uh, the recipe to favour um, the lighter oil fractions. So switch to advanced oil processing with the, uh, with the um, refinery and uh, we've hooked up some water and then I start getting the cracking going. We're cracking... Um, well, we're cracking everything. We're cracking the heavy oil into the light and the light into the petroleum gas. And we will need more light cracking than heavy cracking because uh, the production of heavy oil has just diminished. I think the recipe that we've got gives us something like 5.5 petroleum gas, 4.5 light oil and one heavy oil or something to that effect. So um, one cracking plant will be more than enough for cracking the heavy oil for now um, until we start adding in more refineries. Uh, but we'll need a fair few more uh, plants for cracking the light oil. One will crack all the uh, light oil produced by the heavy oil cracking and then one can hopefully deal with the oil from the refinery itself. Um, and we'll probably need to add it a bit more as well just because the tanks are already full um, but uh, we've already got the um, petroleum gas supply um, improving. We've got uh, two, well, we've got one of each set up right now. We're going to add in a second for the light oil to petroleum gas. At the moment there isn't any room to add any more in. Uh, we will have to, I guess, expand the walls of Frackham to uh, to make room for them or we could change our mind and build it down in the south at the moment I'm thinking just to use my usual system have them in between the storage tanks but uh, because of the the rates of production and stuff that'll have to extend a fair bit beyond the storage tanks uh, particularly considering that this time around I'm probably just gonna have four tanks for each kind of oil fraction I think that's what I usually do um, rail world being the exception where I went for 12 just because it it sort of it made a nice square 9 by 9 square of of 2 by 2 tanks um, but it's more than you need, really, um, particularly considering that I can now use uh, the circuit network to uh, limit the production of the different kinds of oil fractions and make sure that they all stay uh, nice and even, um, which is why I've been doing a little bit of messing about with my usual design. I'm having the water go on the outside and then the oil, the oil type to be cracked going on the inside. Usually I have it the other way around because it makes more sense for... Um, connecting up the pipes and stuff, but by having it the other way around, I can put one small pump in um, that uh, is like separates the tanks from all the cracking plants, and then I can use that to uh, decide when the cracking plants switch on and when they don't, um, so that I can like put a limit on like only crack when there's less petroleum gas than light oil and things like that. Unfortunately, I can't do that at the moment because we don't have any electric engines on us, which you need to make the small pumps. But the pipes are in place for uh, when I start doing that, and it'll mean that I don't have to worry about uh, manually switching off and on uh, the various cracking plants. I just need to make sure to put in enough that it will always uh, be able to crack whatever um, is thrown at it, um, and then set it like that, and whichever ones will need switching on will switch on. Um, so yes, we'll leave that to do its thing. Uh, we now have our petroleum gas production again. It is somewhat limited because we couldn't do with adding a third uh, cracking plant, but we'll and we'll do that later. We'll let things even out and see how it works. There should well, there might be enough uh, to sort of max out the requirements of of batteries and plastic that the that the towns currently have. It might be that there's something else uh, limiting the production of blue science. It may even be the number of assemblers because at the moment uh, we need to upgrade them to level threes before the ratios uh, work out as I want them to. Anyway, we're over in Colbury dealing with uh, the defensive situation. Biter attacks have been intensifying uh, quite a bit recently, and so I did the I, did, I gave the wall a once over. Um, there was one particular bit where the uh, the turret was very depleted, and it seemed like all the the biter attacks from the north were concentrating on that one point. So I doubled up the uh, the defenses there, and hopefully that'll be fine. But we need to do something about these bases, and now that we have blue signs, we can. We've got a lot more research. Um, done. We've already, we've already got a couple new military technologies and there I am setting up my new combat shotgun and we can already make the armor piercing shotgun shells. Usually um, I get these later in games because um, I'll do like all the blue signs before I do any alien signs. The reason being that usually I don't attack the aliens, um, well the biters. I don't know why I called them aliens there, I guess it's because of the alien artifacts. Uh, yes, I don't usually attack the biters much until um, I need their artifacts. 
Um, but in this case, they're, they're being so aggressive themselves that I'm just getting plenty of artifacts simply by dealing with them. So uh, we can do any alien science we want, and so I fast-tracked straight to... Um, I think the final military technology is what you get the, uh, the armor-piercing shotgun shells at, so um, we should not have any trouble uh, with getting uh, like a good enough gun for dealing with the biters. Um, the issue will be more with uh, arm... well, I was going to say arming and armoring, but only armoring in this case. The arming is fine. Except in terms of arming the armor, which is also a thing. Um, so, we just built a tank. We can actually do that. It only takes normal engines, um, so it's actually fairly easy to make them. Um, all you need to do is do the research, and then you'll already have probably all of the, uh, the necessary technology. So, we plonked one down, and uh, we'll see about getting it well supplied. It's got two spaces for uh, coal stacks, and then it has a machine gun and a cannon, but unfortunately I can't make the cannon shells. They require explosives. Explosives are fiddly. I could physically make them, but if I was going to make them, I would make them in a separate town, so I'm going to not allow myself to build them. I've already cheated slightly by building some new production in the main base, which I think I said I wasn't going to do, but I built some production for the um, armor-piercing shotgun shells. The reason being that I'm, I'm worried I, I might need them to survive, um, and that without them, um, towns could potentially fail, uh, depending on how things go. That is always the danger with this, and it's why I don't like having the biters on too strongly, because if they suddenly come in and blow up something really important, um, you can end up in a bit of a death spiral. I've not yet really... actually, I've experienced that in one save that I did a very long time ago, where I... I again, I was in the middle of a desert, and again, I went for all um, coal power, and it turned out very badly for me. The, the same th thing could happen here, and the fact that I'm spread out so far means that it's easier for the biters to destroy one item that can send the entire network into into disarray and potentially destruction. But anyway, now that we have this tank, we can see... Uh, we'll, we'll see what it can do. Uh, we can't get the tank... Uh, the, the cannon shells, but we can um, make use of its uh, quite strong armor. It's got a thousand armor points, or uh, health points, or damage, or whatever points it is. Um, and that's pretty hefty, um, and as you can see, it's taking these hits very well. There are some big biters here, though I'm staying out of their range initially. I'm sort of moving my way along the... Um, at the base from one end to the other, and we come to the big biter, and it turns out big biters are extremely hard to kill with the with the machine gun that you get on the tank. In the end, I have to abort. I managed to get it down to something around 50% health, so uh, another uh, attack run will deal with it. But uh, it, it's a bit slow and annoying, and if you have two of them to deal with, uh, it becomes significantly more difficult. So, um, after trying a bit more shooting, I decided to just ram it, and it just it gets dis destroyed nearly immediately, which shows... Um, uh, it's a good demonstration of the, the armor uh, power of the tank. Um, it's got so much health that you can just ram into stuff, and the fact that it's on wheels means that you can ram into stuff, and so you can easily um, just blow up anything you want to. I think I just left two turrets out in the middle of the, of the desert, and this explains a lot, because I got very confused later on when I only had eight turrets having crafted ten, and I finally realized that it's because there are some still out in the desert somewhere, and they are there um, to this day. I did not retrieve them this episode, so I'll have to try and remember to do that next episode, though I guess it's useful to have them around helping to defend. Some biters might come that way and end up encountering the turrets um, instead of getting to the bases. So who knows, but we should probably try and retrieve them if we can, just because um, they might not be that much use out in the wilderness. But anyway, there's another base here. This is sort of two bases. There was a base that was entirely worms. I either cleared out the um, uh, the spawners from before, um, but left the worms, or it was just a, a worm base anyway, and I decided to leave it. But another base has sprung up right next to it, um, making things significantly harder. So I'm having to attack from uh, the west, even though that's sort of further into biter territory. Uh, but it goes fairly well. We uh, take out the majority of the stuff. There's only, I think, at this point, one spawner left, uh, but there's quite a few worms. But I have a plan on how to deal with them. Uh, using the tank seems to be not very effective, and if there's more than one big biter, it makes it significantly difficult. But what we can do is, once we've destroyed the spawner, we can just plonk down some turrets and put them in place. The biters will shoot, not the biters, the worms will shoot the tank, but because it has so much armor, um, that's fine. They can shoot it all day. Uh, I mean, they will eventually blow it up, but it takes quite a few hits to, uh, to take the thing out, and I can always uh, repair it up. In fact, I wonder if me hopping out of the tank will uh, lead to them continuing to shoot the tank or shooting me, because at that point I will be able to repair the tank potentially as quickly as they're destroying it, which, be, which would be uh, quite interesting. But anyway, um, the turrets seem to be the better way to go when it comes to uh, dealing with the actual um, killing of the biters. Uh, I keep saying biters, the worms, the biters are fine. We can deal with the biters easily with the tank, it would seem. Uh, a large enough swarm would probably overwhelm us, uh, particularly if we get to behemoths. Uh, at that point, we would... 
uh, start to have some serious trouble and we'd probably have to switch to uh, a, a pretty hefty power suit. But uh, the ability to, to just uh, deploy turrets out of the tank is invaluable, really, because it means that we can be, like, um, practically impossible to kill and still be able to deploy some uh, ridiculous firepower. Um, potentially unlimited, because you can just keep deploying more turrets. Um, laser turrets can probably do a pretty good job as well. We can see how that goes later. Um, the only issue being that you need a power supply for that, but we could always um, bring the power over from the, the main network. Or we could even just like have some solar panels nearby, um, and it wouldn't leave them with much power, but they would still be doing some shooting. I don't know what sort of uh, what sort of damage rates they would be able to deal with uh, with solar panels. We'll have to look into that. But anyway, we've pretty much run out of ammo at this point, so I'm going to go home. But I spot this lovely outcropping here. Uh, it goes right into the middle of this lake, so I decide that I'm going to build a radar outpost. Um, I want to be doing some more scanning. I'm looking for more deposits and stuff. I'm trying to find the perfect stone deposit. There are a couple of candidates um, in various locations. Uh, particularly, there's one in the, the northeast, one in the southeast, uh, that both look pretty good. But they're a, a little bit too far away from my liking, and I'm wondering if I can find one maybe a little bit nearer somewhere, it's hard to say, I mean, it would have to be an unscanned area, so that's going to be uh, fairly far away to start with, but we'll see what we can do. And it's always a good idea to have a better um, idea of the lay of the land. Um, so, seeing as this outcropping has this nice little neck that everything has to go down to get into it, uh, we can just uh, put some really dense uh, turret protection here, and it should be pretty much impossible for the biters to get through. I've even used some, uh, some walls, so that may not be a good idea. We're running very, very low at this point. We have something like six stacks and a bit of stone bricks um, and in total we have I think six stacks of raw stone so it is really not much we really need to do something about getting a, a stone town one thing I'm considering is having the stone town settle in some random spot or have it built on the side of another town and then just straight away have the stone uh, delivered in from other places um, the only issue with it being that we still have to set up some actual um, stations on the stone deposits themselves, and I'm really not sure how to conduct um, that sort of operation, because we would need lots of little things. We need, like, tiny trains that are just, like, an engine. Well, I guess two engines on either end, because everything's two-headed. Uh, maybe we could manage otherwise. Actually, no, that's, that would be too complicated. Um, having, uh, like, two different systems in the same place, one with loops and one without it, would probably not end well. Uh, but yes, we could have some like one cargo wagon trains that deliver stone from these little places, but they wouldn't be proper towns. I don't know whether I should give them towns or whether I should give them uh, little hamlet names or just like name them after commenters or something or just do something different with them. I guess I would have to just because there's lots of tiny ones around the place um, and a lot of them are too far away from um, from any bit, like any of the actual towns to uh, to like send the, the stone over and then deliver it through. Uh, we'll have to find some way because we need stone uh, in order to survive. Uh, I mean, we need it for the rails, that's one thing. I sort of forgot about that when I turned a lot of the, the raw stone into stone bricks. But uh, we're quite limited in how many rails we can make now, so we can't make a, like a stone deposit, well, a stone town that's too far away, because we'll not be able to reach it. I guess we'll, we'd have to set up shop there for a minute, um, get some stone bricks being produced before we could go back and use it to build the rails that would lead to it, which is not a very good way um, of doing things. Anyway, I've been over in Chipton, checking up on how things are going. Uh, the biters have been causing some damage over there, but I fixed it, added in a couple more walls, again using up our dwindling supplies, and I noticed that we have some trouble uh, with the power supply, and I track it down once again to the water situation. Um, so I've added in another pump, but I've now... Like, someone told me that you need one pump per 10 steam engines, um, and I think I have 48 steam engines um, and four pumps, so that shouldn't be enough, and I imagine we'll have some trouble with that again. Um, I should add in a fifth one at that point. It should be fine if we get the, the pipe set up correctly. Uh, but for now it's okay, um, I guess because there's only 40 or less steam engines worth of power production going on. Uh, I think there, there might be some power issues later in the episode, I forget what uh, what exactly happens, but uh, we might end up reaching uh, the limit again, because the power can run like above that for a while, but it will deplete the water, and then suddenly the water will be depleted and the power will drop and stay um, with a lower limit than before, which is quite a cool thing to see that like you can have it run above its limit, but only for a short time, and if you overdo it then... Um, you can never run that limit again because you, you run out of, uh, of supplies. I guess I could get, like, I could fill up some tanks with uh, with boiling water to help slow that effect down or something like that. I'd, like, apply a bit more of a buffer to it. But whatever, we'll work that out some other time. Uh, really, we just need to put in enough pumps and not have to deal with that sort of thing. 
Um, also, we might need to do some solar panel stuff. I don't know whether it's a good idea. Tell me what you think of that. Should I use solar panels, or should I try and stick entirely to steam engines? And also, should I try uh, putting efficiency modules in things? Um, at the moment, I feel like it's the only way I can survive, but perhaps things will get a little bit easier later when I've got some uh, better military technology uh, under my belt and constituting my belt. But anyway, uh, we're back in the car again now uh, to do some, some more rounds. Uh, checking up again on Chipton, because I'm quite worried about it. It's taken another hit while we've been gone. There was a turret that got blown up before we fixed it and resupplied everything, um, but uh, they're already taking more damage. This this point is sort of... It's where a lot of the biter attacks are hitting. It seems like there are two main focuses. One is this bottom uh, this bottom left corner of Chipton, and the other is like the, the middle top area of Colbury. Um, hopefully some of the Chipton attacks will be dealt with now thanks to us getting rid of some of the biters there. That should at least get rid of um, the attacks in the uh, in the southeast or southwest of Colbury. Uh, the southeast is still getting attacked. They're running straight past all the other towns. Um, quite an impressive feat actually. They're running past uh, Newton, uh, maybe Flaskmere. It's hard to say exactly what direction they're coming from but they're managing to bypass all of the towns, run straight over the rails and right up to the wall uh, defending Colbury. Just straight through the middle of everything which is quite a weird way of doing it. So anyway, we're over now in uh, in Southbridge, or South Chipton or whatever, uh, where we're adding in some more miners. The miners were running out a little bit quicker than I expected, so I'm just going to put in a bunch more that should uh, keep things running uh, a good while into the future. And I also noticed that there have been some attacks here as well, because there was some uh, there was a damaged turret that we had to, to fix up. Uh, we've, we've moved everything anyway, now we're continuing to expand out the defences, but once again we have to use more walls to, to expand out the, the coverage of this particular town. Um, this is quite an important one as well, because uh, if we lose this, we lose our power supply. There are only like three miners left now uh, mining coal over in um, in Colbury, and it's just continuing to drop. Um, those three remaining miners, though, have a lot between them. Um, a couple of the more recently running out ones have been quite low on supply for a while. I think we're going to have those three running uh, for a fair bit into the future, but um, they, of course, won't be enough on their own to, to keep the system running. So we've got all that covered. Uh, we're going through Colbury quite quickly, it's not Colbury, we're going through Southbridge quite quickly as well, uh, looking at it. Maybe we'll, it'll be sooner rather than later that uh, Southbridge gets uh, uh, gets outmoded and abandoned, and uh, we move on to a new uh, coal town, wherever that may be. I can't think whether there are any nearby coal deposits, probably some, well, anywhere. They could be anywhere, um, except the, the west, because everything's barren over there for some reason. I guess it's probably because it's a desert, I could probably guess that. But anyway, we're over in Flaskmere, resupplying the um, the alien artifacts. So it turns out there are more than enough there already. Uh, there was like 200, I've added on another 100 uh, that I have handy. And I think I've got like a thousand or something uh, back in, in a chest in the main base or something like that. I know it's, it's like two stacks, um, and it seems like a stack might be 500, um, but I could be wrong about that. Anyway, the situation with the blue signs is going quite well. Uh, we still have four uh, labs running out before the next delivery arrives, but it's the same as before. So um, that's not too bad. We're staying the same, um, and hopefully sooner rather than later we'll be able to uh, up that to all of them running all the time. It shouldn't be too difficult. We only need uh, a slight bit more, uh, and it might it might require the Mark III assemblies, in which case we'll just have to wait for a while before we uh, get those in place. Anyway, we're resupplying over in the main base, getting some more ammo in place. Sooner, well, well, very soon, I keep saying sooner rather than later, very soon we are going to build a military town of some description. Haven't decided on exactly where it will be, or it's like exactly what its nature will be, but it will at least be making ammo of the two different kinds. It might also be making, um, I don't know, it might make tanks. I'm not sure if I need to do that. It might make explosives and, 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 uh, and tank rounds and things like that. I'll work it out uh, when we actually build the thing. But that'll be fairly short in, into the future, or whatever. Those were not good words that I said there. But uh, we're attacking this base down here, this one that sort of initially uh, drove us to sort out the blue science as quickly as possible, because it's right next to Flaskmere, and there's nothing we could do about it. But now we can, because of our tanks. So um, we're turret creeping in. Uh, there's quite a few big worms in this. It's gonna be, there's going to be a lot of sort of running away and, and, and repairing up. Uh, but I employ a tactic... Um, that I've used previously when I've not been in a tank of putting in some turrets that are out of range of the worms, but they're in range of any biters that will uh, that can reach me uh, like while I'm attacking the worms. So the idea is that I keep my tank still, and any biters that can get close enough to me get killed by the turrets before they can really do any damage, and that gives me uh, the opportunity to deal with some of the uh, the worms. So I'm still being blown up a lot by the the big worms that are there. 
Uh, but we're, make, we're, we're getting there, we're making it. Uh, there's only two spawners left and um, like one medium worm. The rest are all big worms that we'll have to deal with uh, with uh, some turrets. One last repair up and then we should be able to do uh, the final run and uh, finish this one off. And I think next episode there's going to be a lot more biter killing to do because there are still quite a few bases. We've not even touched the uh, the bases over in the east. Uh, though they're not quite as urgent because there's forest in the way and that's sort of slowing down the progression of the pollution. But there's also that one huge base in the south that's recently come into range that I am not looking forward to dealing with. Anyway, we deploy a couple of turrets and they quickly dispatch the, uh, uh, the four big biters that were around the place. And finally we've dealt with this particular base um, which is probably taking the most pollution out of any of them. Uh, but actually saying that, it doesn't look like they're too far in, but uh, we will finish up for today. I try and sort of park up neatly, um, and I just crash into the wall of flask beer. We'll sort that out next episode. Uh, for now, I will go to the sign, and we shall finish. So I shall say goodbye, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.